Hello friends, once again, this is Brother Ferguson with Remnant Restoration Outreach Ministries and I hope you had a good week this week and it is getting uh, summertime now, that's what we've all been waiting on uh, in the natural is uh, some nice warm weather so I believe it, it's here upon us now and uh, we're so glad to be back here to uh, uh, read the Word of God, teach it, and preach, and uh, just worship with you today. And uh, as I said last week and the week before, you know, I'm going to praise God more now than I ever have. And uh, I think He is due all the prayers so, uh, and the praise. So for a couple minutes, let's just praise Him. Holy, 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 holy. Lord God Almighty, how great and how mighty you are. Oh Lord, Heavenly Father, hallowed be thy name. Your name is holy. You're righteous. You're wonderful. You're the creator of the heavens and the earth. We give you praise and we give you glory. All life came from you. Every foul spirit has to stand subject to you. Lord, you're just worthy. You're great and you're mighty. Your name is above every name. You hold all power in the heavens and in the earth. And, and besides your power, no one else would have or anything or anybody would have any power except you give it to them. So, Lord, we just want to praise you at the beginning of this program. We just want to glorify you. You're great and you're mighty. There's none like you. You are a holy God. You are powerful. Oh, Jesus, your name, hallowed be that name. Great and mighty is your name. Glory to Jesus' mighty name. Oh, friend, I tell you, we need to praise him. We need to seek after him uh, today, just like ever before. Uh, more than we ever have because uh, there is so much going on in the land and I know a lot of people saying that uh, you know the rapture could take place today but friend there's a few things that has to be fulfilled and when it's fulfilled uh, then the Lord will come and he said that no man knows the day nor the hour so uh, why bother to try to proclaim what time he will be uh, as I heard some today say oh he could come he's going to do this and we know he's coming now and but no one knows no one knows just he knows but uh, I want to share with you today we're going to talk about Peter and uh, you know Peter was an unusual character in the Bible and uh, let me just tell you a little bit about him. Uh, Peter is originally named Simon until Jesus changed it to Cephas, uh, meaning a rock. He was a Galilean. Uh, number one, he was around the Sea of Galilee because that was his lifestyle. He, uh, he was a fisherman, and, and he fished on that sea, the Sea of Galilee, that he was raised in uh, Bethsaida. Uh, he, and here's something that maybe a lot of you don't know, or maybe you've never considered, but uh, he followed John the Baptist uh, for, for John's ministry. And uh, he obviously had a heart for God, and and when he heard the word and even speak spoken through uh, John, uh, Peter was a different fellow, but he still hadn't been changed yet. He had he was a pretty rough character, and uh, you know Peter was an eyewitness to the miracles of Jesus. He also witnessed the Shekinah glory upon Jesus. Wouldn't that be something? Wouldn't that be wonderful to have? When Jesus said, follow me, he just 
started following him. He didn't question it. He didn't uh, ask you where we're going or what we're doing. Something about the voice of Jesus was activating the faith in Peter, and, and it was moving him. And uh, so uh, he just began to follow him, you know, without question. And, and Peter was the first one to preach on the day of Pentecost. Uh, out of all the twelve disciples, he was the very first one. His life changed from a follower, which is a disciple, to an apostle, which means one sent forth. Peter was the first to call Jesus the Son of the Living God. Uh, well, if you remember, if not, let me refresh your memory. Uh, Jesus asked the disciples one day, Whom do men say that I am? And uh, men said, some of them said that he was John the Baptist, risen from the dead. Uh, some said Elijah. Some said one of the prophets, but then he asked them, Who do you say that I am? And Peter spoke up, and he says, uh, You're Jesus, the Son of the living God. See, there was something in his spirit uh, that he knew some things by the Spirit, because now that he was coming into the uh, ministry as an apostle, as, as up here before, he was a follower, which was a, a disciple, but uh, his calling was an apostle, apostle, uh, one that's sent forth by God. Well, that don't mean that that just happened in the years that he was born, but he was sent forth just like Jesus was before the foundation of the world was ever laid. And, I find some things that Peter says it's uh, very interesting in in the book of Peter Peter's talking and Peter's letters and uh, he's also uh, teaching some things and uh, uh, one thing here I noticed uh, in this one that I left out I think I mentioned that uh, without spot and without blemish that there was oh probably over a hundred incidences in the Bible that that terminology would be used as without spot and without blemish. And, and uh, of course, you know, Peter says this in, in verse 19 um, of chapter 1. So uh, Peter was a very different person. Now, uh, look who Peter is writing to. He's writing to the strangers that are scattered uh, abroad and those who have precious like faith. Well, the reason it's worded precious like faith is because his type of faith was different than what every man's faith is because the Bible says God has appointed to every man a portion of faith. A portion meaning a mouth. They have a certain amount of faith. But Peter, here he is, and, and he has been chosen from the beginning of time of the Lord, and so were some of the others in the New Testament that we see that's been taught to us. But uh, uh, find Peter and some of the things he's saying, which uh, a few things here obviously tells us that uh, there there has to be a few more things that happens. There has to be some things, that, and not that the world's going to end, but the end's going to come, uh, and that would be the conclusion of everything that's been written and said and done in the Bible. And uh, Peter is uh, also one that was like a spokesman to all the apostles. Uh, when Jesus would speak it, uh, Peter would be the one that uh, uh, pretty much directed it to the other apostles until uh, Paul came on the scene. 
But uh, I'm going to read you a little bit here, beginning at verse 1 here. Well, I'm going to read verse 1 in Peter, and then uh, I'll go over to uh, verse 1 of 2 Peter. Uh, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, uh, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. And he says here, it's to the elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, which goes back to what I just said. Now, elect means chosen, and this elect that it's referring to is a people that's been chosen with Christ in God before the foundation of the world was ever laid, uh, signifying that uh, Jesus, uh, well, let, let me lay it out like this in a building form. The apostles laid the foundation, but Peter... You know, he was the chief cornerstone, uh, showing the foundation and the upper part of the building, signifying that he is the builder and the finisher and the author of the entirety of it. So he's writing here to the elect, which is chosen. And as it says in verse 2, according to to the foreknowledge of God the Father. Now, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father was something that uh, God had established before he ever made man upon the earth. You know, just like uh, uh, Jesus Christ, you know, himself. And uh, I'm going to read you uh, our verse 1 in chapter 1 of this second Peter now listen closely and if you don't have your Bibles write some notes down write this down because if you go back and read this I find it very interesting especially for those that hunger and thirst after righteousness because you know, the Bible says we shall be filled now, we're not hungry and thirsting after bread or any other thing, but we're hungry and thirsting after righteousness. And so Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So let's talk about these uh, two verses here uh, for a couple moments. Uh, well, we see right here that uh, this isn't to everybody. Then this isn't to people in the Old Testament. It's not to people, you know, in the early church. But this is to a people in the last days that has been chosen and called of God and elected and uh, I want you to see this I want you to see clearly so you can understand uh, what Peter is saying here now when he's saying to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ now this righteousness here he's talking about, he's comparing it to uh, what you and I have. Uh, uh, you can't be righteous without God, without his spirit, uh, because our righteousness was as a filthy rag. But uh, he never was a sinner. He only had sin upon him after the spirit left that body on the cross. The Spirit left the body, and then mine and yours, and all the sins of the world came upon that body, and he took that body to the grave, and, and all of them sins are gone now. They're dead, and, and we've been baptized with him. We have risen a new creature in Christ Jesus uh, through the baptism of it, 
And I want to go back to verse 1 again here to the strangers. Uh, I will mention this. In 1979, when God called me and gave me the anointing, he told me those very words. He said, I will send you before the strangers which are scattered abroad. Now, you might not understand who these strangers are, but they're, they're not like there's somebody not known of, uh, by God, but uh, they're the people that Jesus said in the last days, uh, because of their disobedience, he would scatter them to the four corners of the earth. So here now, uh, time has gone by. Uh, the early church has come and gone. Uh, we're ready to step into a uh, combination of the conclusion of it all uh, through and by the Bible. And then even in the book of Jude, just before Revelation, it says for us to contend for that faith that was once delivered uh, to the saints. So, so uh, there's been a lot of things that's come in and uh, took the place of the real genuine faith in God. So, but again, back on uh, verse 1, on the second letter of Peter here, it talks about, the letter is written to them that have obtained like precious faith. Okay, to obtain like precious faith, uh, uh, it's different than just having faith. Uh, uh, this like precious faith was a faith that, well, for him, his faith was the uh, calling uh, to be a, an apostle. So he had, uh, he was an apostle, meaning one that was, was sent forth. And uh, so he's writing a letter to them that had this like precious faith. Well, Peter knew and understood some things that others didn't understand. We know there was times in his life that he, uh, he was ashamed. Uh, uh, to be with Jesus because of the fact that uh, uh, one time he was uh, literally laying on a boat naked and he cursed and and he told the Lord depart from me before uh, because I am a sinner I'm, I'm an evil man and but see uh, Jesus didn't come to cause him to say those words but Jesus came to give him this special faith to be an anointed apostle. And uh, it's a precious like faith that he's writing to a people now who have obtained this same type of faith. Well, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of the Lord. But notice a lot of places it says faith, 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 faith throughout the Bible, but through Peter's uh, letters, he's saying, like precious faith. It's different. Now, why would his be different? It's because he walked with Jesus. These apostles, apostles were with Jesus. They saw uh, firsthand what he did. They saw, like I read, he, he saw that Shekinah glory upon Jesus. Uh, he saw miracles. He saw uh, the things happen that had never ever happened before. And uh, so, you now he's talking about, I'm writing to a people that have this like precious faith. So again, now these strangers are not, as I said, not a people that God wouldn't know, but they literally are people that, that he does know. And uh, now, we're, if I might put it this way, he's writing to them because it's their time to be coming in 
to the ministry of the hour that we are in. And uh, verse 2 in uh, chapter 1 says, The elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit and to obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Now, if you had all of that multiplied upon you, uh, you're going to walk a, a walk that's much, much different than just plain old regular faith. So here Peter is, uh, he's writing these letters, and, and these letters uh, uh, cover some things that I'm, I'm going to back up and start reading here in verse 3 now. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we've been begotten uh, through him because uh, first of all, we, had, we that's been baptized in his name, we were also baptized into his death. So when we were baptized into his death, we became uh, recipients of this resur first resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then verse 4 says, To an, an inheritance incorruptible, and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. It's something that God has had all along, and uh, that's been reserved for us, and it's in the heavens, and, and it's not incorruptible, but it it's not it's an inheritance that's uh, incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away, preserved in heaven for you. Now the Old Testament, we can see clearly, I'll just use the Bible part because many things in the natural, this has happened, has faded away. The move of uh, Moses, the move of being in Egypt, the move of the promised land back then, and the things that they went through have faded away. But he's talking about one now that's preserved that will not fade away, and it'll always be there. Uh, that because it says fadeth not away and it's been reserved in heaven for you. So here is a move that's reserved and it's to a people that uh, are feeling the unction of the word of God kind of like Peter did. Peter first followed the, John the Baptist and but when Jesus came on the scene, he left John, which, uh, you know, was uh, a plan of God anyway, because John said, uh, I must decrease and he will increase. So uh, that surely happened because of what happened to John the Baptist. But look at uh, verse 5, who are kept by the power of God through faith and to salvation. Now, what are they going to do? Ready to be revealed in the last time. So, see, uh, David wasn't revealed until uh, the battle of, with the Philistines when he went up before Goliath and and then God brought him on the scene, and now David's been revealed to all of Israel, and uh, we could see it was his appointed time. 
but he's saying pretty much some of the same thing to a people for this hour that, that we're coming into who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Okay, we're kept by his, God's power, not by a man, not by a religion, but by the power of God. And God will be the very one that will reveal us in this last time. And uh, in other words, uh, you might not even know yourself that God has a purpose for you in this last move of the Spirit, that, which is surely coming up on the earth. And it has to come up on the earth because of the wording of the Scriptures in the Bible. Verse 6 says, Wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith be much more precious than of gold that perish, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So here, here's a, here again, here's a people that he's writing to. He's writing to the strangers that's been scattered abroad. He's writing to a people that uh, has received this uh, uh, like precious faith that, that, that they had, and which uh, I have to mention it again in the book of Jude where it says, now contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. So this faith was the one that Jesus uh, in the flesh delivered to the saints when he chose these twelve and they went forth and they began to preach the gospel. They began to fulfill what Jesus calls, called them to be and to do and then others uh, took on faith because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. So hearing the word of the Lord uh, still has that uh, uh, to it. Uh, you can hear the word and your faith is going to grow. Your faith will get bigger and bigger and bigger. But see, it, it's talking about here, if need be, that you are in heaviness through manifold temptation, signifying many. Now, uh, temptations here also uh, covers trials, you know, trials of life, uh, not only being tempted by things and monies and peoples and men and women, but uh, it's the things of the world. And... Uh, He's saying, if need be, you know, that God will be the one that will allow this to happen. And uh, so, my friend, we're not going to go into this last day unprepared because this writing lets us know that Jesus is qualifying uh, people now for the last day movement. And... Uh, they have a hunger for God. They have a desire to please God. They want to fulfill His will and not their will. They don't want to uh, start a religious uh, organization, but they just want to follow Jesus and point others to Jesus. And that's what our interest is, to get you to look unto Jesus. He'll be the author and the finisher of your faith and and uh, verse 9 uh, or no verse 8 whom having not seen we're talking about uh, Jesus Christ here whom having not seen you love in whom though now you see him not yet believe ye Rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. 
And uh, if you remember, there was one of the apostles uh, uh, by the name of, uh, uh, I believe it was uh, Philip. Uh, he said, I won't believe unless I can touch his side. And, and Jesus come pretty much just walking through the walls. He'd come hither, Philip. And, you know, he had him to touch him. He says, he knelt down. He said, my Lord and my God. He said, now you see and you believe. But blessed are those who have not seen, but yet they do believe. Verse 9, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Now here is the prophets, I mean God's prophets. Uh, they wanted, they were so interested in after hearing from God and they spoke it and even though it's taken time to come to pass, the, they wanted to see this, what was coming unto you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Well, we know that surely happened. He suffered on the cross, uh, he was rejected, he came into his own, his own received him not, and it's just like uh, we've heard several people say, oh, I want to be like Jesus. Well, if you want to be like Jesus, you want to be crucified, you want to be rejected, and then you want to be crucified. So. You have to be careful what you ask for because you very well might get it. Uh, verse 12, And to whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. Even the angels haven't been able, haven't been permitted to see what's going to take place in this last move of these people that God's going to use upon the earth. Uh, verse 13, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Look how it says, not your body part so much, but it's the mind. Gird up the loins of your mind. So, signifying, set your mind on Him. Set your mind on His Word, His commandments, and and just be sober and follow after him as the rest of the verse says be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of jesus christ so here my friend uh, as i read this you know i thought wow that is so wonderful to know uh, because it says that there's going to be some grace that's been brought to me and I'll just read the entire 13 again wherefore gird up the loins of your mind be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ well, if you know what that is saying, it's saying that uh, uh, it's pretty much talking about the uh, book of Revelation. And that's what it means, the revealing of Jesus Christ. All things are going to be revealed. 
uh, whether they be true or not. There's nothing done in secret that won't be shouted from the, the rooftops, and uh, there's nothing hidden that won't be uncovered. That's what the scriptures tell us. Uh, 14. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. Well, the former lust in my ignorance and your ignorance was we really never knew any better until we heard the truth of the word. Now, once we heard the truth of the word, that takes us into the place called uh, the age of accountability. I know there's a lot of people teaching the age of accountability is 12 years old, but not so, my friend. My age of accountability was 24 years old because I never heard the truth until I was 24. So since being 24, I will be held accountable of the truth that is being shown and told and taught to me. Uh, verse 15, But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons judges according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. So the, all of this is talking about more time. Uh, that's why I say, a lot of people say the rapture could take place any day. Well, that's not true uh, because uh, these uh, scriptures here puts that down. And uh, there's going to be some sojourning. Uh, there's going to be some things that's been brought to us uh, at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And, and we're going to receive of him some things that angels have looked into and uh, weren't permitted to see. And we're also going to have things uh, uh, come to us that the uh, prophets of old uh, searched diligently but wasn't permitted to see also. So, so you see, my friend, there is much I'm going to just say much more time as far as uh, the conclusion of all things that the Lord has purposed from the beginning of time. As he said, I'm the beginning and I am the end. I'm the first and I am the last. So he's the one that started it and he'll be the very one that finishes it. And uh, verse 18, for as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by traditions from your fathers. Well, uh, we sure have heard a lot of this in the last 20-some years about uh, uh, prosperity, and uh, he calls it vanity. Uh, and it's a tradition of the elders, and uh, they have taught it to their children. And, uh, of course, some of us never had a father to teach us any of it. Uh, but it was the Holy Ghost that uh, has come upon most all of us, and, and it's taught us the things that we need to know for this hour. But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. That's how it comes. Uh, not by tradition from our fathers. Not uh, We weren't redeemed with corruptible things uh, as silver and gold, money. Uh, but we have been by, uh, by the blood of Jesus Christ uh, 
redeemed as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Well, if you remember, I think it's been uh, oh, at least a couple weeks ago that uh, we did a teaching on without spot and blemish and, uh, and now we're seeing another spot and blemish here that it's referring to that uh, uh, Christ didn't have, that uh, the blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, which uh, Christ, being a male, the firstborn of the whole entire family of God, and he was that sacrificial lamb, as John the Baptist said when he saw him come, and behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. So uh, he fulfilled that. The sins have been taken away. All we have to do is just honor and believe Him for that. We have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and we shall be saved. Uh, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you talking about Jesus here. Uh, he was manifested for who? Uh, these that Peter is writing to. And uh, I guess I need to point this out also. Uh, if you write me a letter, no one else uh, can claim what's written in that letter because you have addressed it to me. You wrote me a letter and told me some things. So I take this letter that you wrote me, and uh, it becomes precious to me. And this letter that Peter has written, he's writing it to, literally, this last day people. You know, that uh, this things that's going to come to them and be brought to them at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And uh, so uh, that's the... Uh, uh, reason for the letters, it's it's directed to who they're intended, who is re intended to receive them. So I, I find myself happy when I read some of these writings and I realize that, uh, hey, praise God, you know, just to have an opportunity uh, to be in this last day ministry, to be in the last day move. And remember, uh, Peter, James, and John, and all the, the disciples, they hadn't been praying to be an apostle. They hadn't been praying to have a ministry with Jesus. Uh, they hadn't prayed none of that at all. But uh, when the time came, God brought them in. God brought them in. Let's... Uh, I'll back up and read 20 again. Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Now who is that you? It's the ones that this letter is to. Who by him do believe in God, that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God, seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently being born again, not of corruptible seed, but, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass, the grass withereth, 
and the flower thereof uh, falleth away, but the word of the Lord endures forever, and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. So, my friend, you could be, if you're hungry and you're thirsting after this righteousness, uh, even though the angels desired to see it and couldn't see it, even though the prophets of old wanted to see it but couldn't see it, but it's reserved by the power of God in the heavens for you and for me. And uh, only they that can receive this word will be those that are per, uh, uh, recipients of this, this word that we're talking about. And uh, we were, like what he said, for you were as sheep gone astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your soul. So that kind of covers, you know, the lust of our flesh and the things that we did in our natural. And uh, I'm going to go back here and read a little bit more. Just chapter 2. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and all hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. Newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. If so be you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a lively stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Uh, we, we covered that in Romans 12, chapter 1, verse 1, where it said, I beseech you, brethren, that... Uh, you present your bodies a, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. But here it says, you as lively stones, uh, we're not going to be dead, but we're going to be alive. And, and we're going to be built up a spiritual house uh, and a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So I have to have a, a movement here on the earth to be able to perform this duty and to do this. And I'm still here, you'll still be here, and a lot of people are uh, living a life that, uh, well, their life is in vain, it's vanity, they're, they're following a religious order instead of the word and the commandments of the Lord. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. And to you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them 
which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed the same is made the head of the corner and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense even to them which stumble at the word being disobedient whereunto also they were appointed. So they stumble at the word uh, because number one they haven't been in the truth. They, they use the scriptures They've been taught that most of it is a doctrine of men or a form of religion uh, by another spirit. And uh, this people, they know him. The rock isn't an offense to us, but it's a foundation to you and I. It's the one that we're to build our house upon. And uh, that rock is Jesus. Uh, number nine, chap the same chapter, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You know, to be in his light uh, means his truth. Uh, so we, we have been in darkness in our day and in our time, and that darkness is the deceit. Uh, and uh, as the scriptures had said before that notable day of the Lord doth come, uh, darkness must cover the earth, and thick gross darkness the people. So... There's going to be a lot of people that's deceived, but uh, we're speaking to a people that we don't want you to be deceived. We want you to seek God. We want you to know the truth. Uh, we know that, uh, as the scriptures does say, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So if you're free, what are you free from? It's not that you're free from sin. Because Jesus paid that price. But what you're free of is every other doctrine. All you have to do is just follow Jesus as he has said. Follow me. I'm the way. I'm the truth. And I'm the life. So that's what you and I should be doing even now. Uh, which in times past were not a people but are now the people of God which have not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. You know, we have an enemy. As a matter of fact, some of us have many enemies. But there's one enemy we all have, and that's Lucifer, Satan, the devil. But uh, there's another enemy that we have that we don't like to talk about, and it's called our flesh. Because our flesh wars against our spirit. And if it wars against our spirit, there's a continuous battle going on uh, between the, the flesh and the spirit. But we want the spirit to be the one that uh, takes total control of our bodies. And, and, and that we are working on. That we will do. And as he said, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Oh, my friend, I hope you're getting this. I hope you understand what these scriptures are saying. There's so many people that their minds and 
is set on the things that Jesus said that men's hearts will fail them for fear of things that's coming up on the earth. Well, your heart is your inner being. It's, it's your, uh, it's your, let me put it this way, it's your religion. It's what you follow. It's what you believe and trust in. But it says men's hearts will fail them for fear of things coming upon the earth. Well, what does that mean by fear of things coming upon the earth? Well, one thing far above all of other things is this. They have been teaching that the rapture is going to take place. You're going to be snatched out of here. And then God's going to destroy the earth. Which, if you learn these scriptures and learn the truth of them, you'll find out that that's not true. So their hope is in vain. And uh, unless they walk in the, the light, turn to the light, and walk in the truth, they will not know the way, and uh, but we know him, that follow after him, that stick with his word and his commandments, we know he is the way, and therefore we know the way because we follow him. Uh, dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Having your conscience honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. It says they shall behold our works. They will see our works works that we're doing and our works will be fruitful our works will be a prosperous work and uh, it says that there's going to be a day of visitation uh, verse 13 let me see what else I can get in here real quick submit yourself to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that with, that with well doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. So, friend, my time is up again. I, uh, maybe we'll get to uh, talk. There's much, much more to talk about here in Peter. And uh, maybe we can cover that the next time. But uh, I uh, hope you uh, got something out of this today. I hope you uh, believe and understand that you have to be uh, in a great relationship with him you have to have that like precious faith that just any old faith won't do but you have to have that type of faith uh, to be in what uh, the apostles was in as far as ministry goes with a great anointing and the Holy Ghost revealing the things to us so uh, until next time, this has been Brother Ferguson with Remnant Restoration Outreach Ministries. And, uh, have that special relationship with the Lord and seek Him and praise Him and uh, stay strong in the Lord.